right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Lizzie Bernthal, who is in Birmingham in the UK. How are you doing, Lizzie? Yeah, great. Nice of you. Excited to be here. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And Lizzie has over 25 years as a health professional educator in the National Health Service, British Armed Forces overseas. And uh, and she's learned a lot as a, you know, as a she was a researcher to a lieutenant colonel three years as her own business coach, where she supports authentic leaders. And what we're going to talk about today is key tips for confidence, leadership and resilience. So, Lizzie, you've had, you obviously have had quite a an exciting and interesting background, uh, you know, visiting war zones, uh, you know, across the world and all of that. And obviously seeing yeah. leadership, you know, being a leader and being around leaders who operate in very intense environments. Um, what are some of the things that you learned from that that can translate to people who, you know, let's face it, most of us aren't going to get shot at during our normal yeah, day. So for, <laughs> for people in, in, in uh, you know, for people in, um, in business or in jobs what what is the what did you learn from that that's translatable yeah I think the first thing I would say is choice Hmm. as a leader we always have a choice and we might not think we have a choice but we do and we make those choices every minute of every day so um, I can only talk about for example um you know when I went to Afghanistan I went to Afghanistan I didn't see I had a choice to go. But actually, looking back on it, I could have easily not gone. But for me as a leader, that would have never been a choice. Because if I didn't go, somebody else could go in my place and come back in a coffin, if I'm realistic. Mm -hmm. I could never do that to anyone. So I never saw it as a choice. But as a leader, it's noticing the choices you're making. And every minute of every day, you can change those choices to those that empower yourself and empower others and support your team. So that's that's number one tip. Yeah, and it's always interesting, like the idea of choice, right? Is Because sometimes people don't think um, they're making choices when they're not making choices, but not not making choices is still a choice. Um, <laughs> Yeah. you know as convoluted as that is uh, yeah. but I do think I do think as human beings though we we kind of avoid choices or we, we struggle to make them because we know that if we choose one thing we unchoose something else and we don't like to do that yeah it's interesting you say that because we have a natural need for certainty and that's where sometimes you can feel reluctant to make a choice because we want certainty and by making a choice, we can then we by definition, we could have made the right choice or the wrong choice. Mm-hmm. But interestingly, absolutely, as you say, making no choice is a choice. And nothing is worse than when you're sitting on that fence and not actually making a, a empowered choice. You just sort of in a, then you become part of a dilemma, which is even worse. Yeah, and and obviously the more you put off making choices, you know, generally speaking, um, if you've done, if you know, if you have the right inputs and you've done the right research and it's time to make a choice, if you put off that choice, you just tend to exacerbate situations. Yeah, indeed, absolutely. Then then that all the procrastination kicks in, which actually is just fear. That's all procrastination is, is fear. And once we acknowledge that we just do it regardless of that fear that's stopping us, then we take the action and the action just solves everything. So, um, so just talk a little bit about making choices, because I mean, like when you were obviously when you were in the military and you're in war zones and everything, I mean, choices have to be made and they have to be made relatively quickly. And they're often made without all of the all of the relevant information, right? So you have to make choices with, you know this obviously better than I do, but you have to make choices with partial information. Uh, yeah. And I think that's something that uh, that is very uh, that is very relevant. Yeah, of course. And so much is related to risk, isn't it? And as a leader, we take risks all the time, and that brings on to the courage side of of, of leadership. But you know, I think we and it, we make choices whether we're you know ill in hospital, do we have this treatment or that treatment? You know, we make choices every minute of every day to the extent of what we're going to have for supper to kind of obviously more extreme where you're in a conflict zone. So part of that choice is is 
evidence and collecting all that evidence we've got. Now that evidence might not be complete, but we still have some evidence of some description that can help us make that informed choice. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and I think then, as you said, moving into talking a little bit more about courage is, I think sometimes people, not that they misunderstand the word, but they think courage is some like huge thing, like it only belongs to people who do yeah. momentous things. Yeah. But but the reality is you you have to show courage every day in, in whatever you're doing to make the correct choices and to show up. Absolutely. And for me, the definition of choice is doing something that can scare you, but you do it anyway. Now, that could be in business, making that how are you call when you don't know what the outcome is going to be or sending that email where you're not, you know, you, you don't want to send it. Having those conversations which you could perceive as challenging. And actually, that is, a, is something the story we might tell ourselves before that conversation, which is another whole situation. So, yeah, I, I passionately believe we make choices that cr create courage every minute of every day not just you don't have to go to Afghanistan it can be walking across the street to say hello to someone where you know you know suddenly they've been through a bereavement or something that can that can feel scary having that conversation uh, no, uh, absolutely and, uh, and the other part that you just touched on there is you know the stories we tell ourselves and I guess that's that's one of the that's one of the hardest things because we're fantastic at extrapolating off of limited data. We're fantastic at predetermining outcomes. And oftentimes, you know, human nature being what it is, we default to worst case scenarios. Yeah. And that's, I mean, there's the stories we make up and it's, it's challenging those stories. Are we making up a story or is this based on reality? But it's also because our brain is there to protect us. And that's the thing. So, our brain is there to protect us from, from, from survival. So therefore, you know, it's the saber tooth tiger from millions of years ago, we had to sprint against to survive. Unfortunately, it's not that anymore, it's other stuff. So our brain will say, don't do it, don't do it. Even though we know whether we're in business or we're leading a team, we know that if we don't do anything, that's where things are gonna go wrong. So we have to defy our brain by taking the action anyway. And then, you know, things start moving. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is, I mean, obviously, if you're in a leadership position, there are people who are looking up to you. And so um, and I think it does help sometimes, like if, when people are expecting a decision for you, if you help them understand the decision making process. And the fact is that you are making sometimes you're making the best decision you can make with limited information. Yeah. And of course, there's all sorts of different levels of decision. There's mm -hmm. some, there are moments where you have to make that decision as a leader because everybody's looking to you. You know, if you're a, particularly can talk about a conflict zone, you don't want your team to decide, I don't, I don't fancy it today. I'm yeah. afraid I'm not playing today because then you'd be dead. So yeah. there are decisions where providing you, and this is all part of leadership to get your team behind you so they trust you. And it's so much is trust. So there are going to be times where you have to make those decisions no matter what, this is what we're doing. And there are other occasions where there's much more negotiation and you're all very much a collaborative working together for the common goal. So it very much depends on the circumstance really. Yeah, and that's a, I'm, I'm glad you raised that as well because I think, uh, I think the pendulum always swings. Like you have some people who like, you know, command and control and this is what we do. Then the pendulum has gone over like everything oh, collaborative involve everybody. But to your point is, there it's time and a place for each and it's really knowing when and I think sometimes people get sucked into one over the other as opposed to having both in your arsenal yeah of course and you know I think all about authentic leadership is owning who you are owning your role as a leader and knowing that the buck stops with you no matter what and taking that ownership so um yes yeah, so as a as it being an authentic leader it's taking that ownership and knowing that the buck stops with you and letting your team know that too, that yes, they have to be responsible, that you know, if they make a mistake or whatever, they have to own that up and then we can work that through as to what that happens. But this is, I think, where the challenge is. And as a leader, you're not there to be liked. Yes, we all want to be liked because we all fear rejection, but that is not your role. And I think that is where we have this situations and occasions where it becomes so collaborative and actually it's because the leader is not taking charge and not lead not showing as a leader they want to be one of the the team that's just 
in the weeds and work close to the leader, you've got to be in that helicopter showing the way so you're so they follow you, but actually you are taking responsibility. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'll take respect over like any day, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I mean, you want, we all want to be liked too. We all want to be liked too, probably, obviously. But that's not, you know, that that's the problem where there is some confusion at times. The need to be liked takes over from the need to be doing the right thing, for example. And, and let's go back to the authentic piece, authentic leadership. Uh, can you uh, just describe what authentic leadership means to you? Because, again, as we were just talking, um, yeah, it means being your true self, and everything, but I mean, it also doesn't mean like to the point where you're sort of diminishing yourself and you're part of the team as opposed to being the leader. So what does authentic leadership look like to you? Yeah, authentic. Great question. Thank you. I think authentic leadership means to me is that it is so part of you are. You are the leader and no one's watching. So you are the same person every avenue of your life. You're not this person at work. You're not this person at home. You're not this person on social media. You are consistently the same person all the time. And you are living your values every day. And as part of that, integrity is absolutely crucial. Now, there's always a bit of confusion between integrity and morality. So mm -hmm. integrity is doing the right thing morality is being right and yeah. that's crucial so for me you cannot be authentic unless you have integrity and integrity is so part of your being that you don't even really notice that you're being that behavior because it's so much embedded within you yeah and interesting when you mention values because i do think that i mean it's critically important but i do think it's probably something that maybe everybody could take a step back for a moment and just ask themselves, what are my core values? Because I don't think that's a question people ask themselves very much. Uh, you know, and, and as we know, as we get older, we tend to have our, our core values tend to be more, you know, smaller and more narrow, but very, 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 very important, you know, how we live our lives by it. Um, but I do think more people could take a step back and actually ask themselves, what are my personal values? Now, it's interesting you mentioned that because, I mean, you know, obviously I help people identify their vision, their purpose as well. And values are so crucial to who you are. Now, um, an authentic leader will know their values very clearly. And it's interesting that those that are never sort of never occurs to them are often those that it's not important to them. And therefore, that's where things can, you know, go a bit awry with their leadership, yeah. if I'm honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yes. So I think not interesting you said that you kind of define them as you get older. What actually happens, we've, we've all got those about, probably about five core values that we have throughout our whole life, but we might not be aware of them. They never, ever change, no matter what we do, whatever circumstance we're in. And then out of that, you can have a huge number of other values that are important to us, but they're very much environment, circumstance, can can change depending on you know where we're at where we are in our lives mm -hmm. and then the other thing just coming back to the integrity piece uh because again as you as you rightly pointed out i mean integrity is obviously you know how you behave and how you behave um you know when no one's looking as well but it's it's really um it's that piece it, it's that integrity piece it's modeling behavior and i think that's something that's been lost a little bit because we live in a such a noisy world and everybody's shouting at each other and telling everybody what to do and you should all of this craziness that's going on but at the end of the day people look at the behaviors you exhibit how you live your life how you walk you know whether you walk the talk or not um you know that modeling of behavior and i think that's so incredibly important and and it's not and there's not enough attention paid to it anymore yeah and it, the, i think the fundamental difference is is being authentic is a way of being. It's not mm. a way of doing. And, I, and that's that's the, 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 the nub here. It is so embedded, as I say, but that's a way of being. And I think this is the how you can clearly define it. It's what you're doing is separate from how you're being. Yeah, because it's funny because, you know, there's a lot of people talk about how, you know, how to be more authentic and how to become authentic. You can't all, be all... more authentic. You either are or you're not, I believe. <laughs> yeah. 
No, absolutely. But it's an interesting thing because it's a word, you know, authenticity now just is getting thrown around all over yeah. the place. Um, you know, it's become a real it's become a real kind of buzzword in many ways. And to your point, I don't think a lot of people really understand what it means. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's because it's a nice, you know, oh, you're an authentic leader. That means you're a good leader. And, you know, and actually, it's only the true authentic leaders who really know what authentic means. And then they are being authentic. But we can always put labels on ourselves or other people. Um, and, and actually, that doesn't mean to say that label is absolutely true to what's going on. Yeah. And one other thing about communi- uh, about communication is, and I think this is probably one of the biggest challenges of leadership and certainly challenges of leadership today, is that, is that more, more, um, more than ever, people receive information in different ways and people like to be informed in different ways. So it's quite challenging often for, for leaders now to, that they have to communicate in multiple ways sometimes sometimes differently to different groups to different individuals or whatever because um you know one size fits all communication just doesn't work anymore yeah i think as you said earlier there's so much noise out there so it's clearing the noise but also the power of a of a good leader or an authentic leader will know all their team so they will know all their team personally they'll know their children's names they'll know their background really know them well as individuals and then they will understand what is the best way to communicate with certain individuals and as a collective, you know, and having that feedback, 360 feedback is gold because actually then you can really find out how you're doing. Yeah, no, absolutely. I know I was thinking it's like, you know, the best thing you think of, you know, managers of sports teams or football teams or whatever. I mean, the best managers know like this player. I need to put my arm around and kind of encourage and build up their confidence. This guy, this guy or gal over here, I need to give a swift kick up the behind yeah. to get them back on track. Yeah, exactly. Which goes down to the whole thing of not being liked. It's being, it's doing the right thing for that, for the whole, for the whole common good of the whole team and the organization and wherever you're working. No, no, absolutely. And and I just think that today, um, leader, and here's the other part about leadership, I think, is um, people always love to say, oh, you know, leadership and management, totally different, totally different. Like leadership, you know, is totally different from management. And yes, there's, obviously, there are parts of leadership, are, but you can't be, a, you can't really be a good leader if you're not a good manager at the same time. No, you can't. But I think there is a subtle difference. I think the management is just a lot of the doing stuff, as we've just talked about, and the leadership is much more the being. So management tends to be much more task driven and much more the the jobs that you're doing as part of your role, your job description. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. That's more the management side. Um, So that's how I see the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But I, uh, as I said, if you don't have both, um, then you just, kind yeah. of, you know, you have this kind of maybe this inspirational leadership, but it's not like it is not practical. You know, it's not implemented no. in a practical fashion. You have to take action to be a leader. You can't just be that person. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. No, because you come across it in the past. I mean, you know, I've come across it a lot. You know, you have the sort of visionary leader and they just paint pretty pictures in the sky, but then everybody has to clean up the chaos. Uh, and then you have leaders who are visionary, but also know, or also operationally realize that visions are only as good as whether you can realize them. I think that's that's a really interesting point, actually. I think all of us as individuals, we have assets within us. Some some people are naturally innovative and visionary. Others are much more practical. So, and it's it's acknowledging where your strengths are but also in what environment are you in? So, you know, if you're in in a culture that's very innovative, that's where you might need to be a visionary leader. But within your team, you've got to make sure you have all these other people as well. Mm -hmm. And obviously a lot of that comes down to self-awareness because as you you rightly point out is... um, you know, you need to know what you're good and uh, good at and what you're not good at. And sometimes when people get into a leadership position, they fall into that trap of thinking they need to be at least perceived as knowing everything or as the expert or whatever. So, which is obviously a mistake. Absolutely. And that's all, again, being part authentic. Part of authentic is the courage to be vulnerable. And a part of the courage to be vulnerable is to say, hands up, I don't know how to do this. 
And we, we're all learning every minute of every day. And obviously from an empowered way, you don't sort of want somebody saying, oh, I can't do this, I can't <laughs> do this. But, you know, it, it, we can't know everything. We are human beings. So a human yeah. being first and a leader second. <laughs> and it's having that acknowledgement. And this is why you have your team there. You know, you'll have experts in your team in certain fields. You can't be an expert of everything. And it's having the courage to say, look, I don't know about this. However, I'm willing to learn, show me. And that empowers your team because then your team can support you. In, but, but the point of like, the leader is that they are the figurehead yep. to do all that. That, does, that, is, that is separate from the knowledge that they might have. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And I think uh, the, you know, the business world is getting more complicated all the time. And there's a lot of um, very, very specific expertise needed in different areas. So it's highly, it's totally unreasonable, you know, to, to try and assume this mantle of being the expert and everything. I think where you often prove your leadership is how good you are at recruiting the right people for the, for the tasks that need to be done. Yeah, and this is where culture, I've got, I'm a, I've got a whole thing about culture, because the culture of organisation is crucial. And, you know, it all comes down from the top of the culture that that organisation wants to portray, and therefore the people they attract. And this is when you get toxicity, unfortunately, where the culture is just not supportive, and it just perpetuates and you know until somebody says right this is enough let's just change this but that takes courage and it takes time and you know it, it can be unpleasant and uncomfortable yeah Absolutely. no it's a, it's, it, it's a great one to, to just end on because I, I just think that uh, the culture one is, is very interesting because mo a lot of organizations their culture just grows organically and as you say it just becomes a reflection on like who the the ceo or whatever it is like whatever their personality is um, and I don't think people, I don't think uh, companies enough actually take a step back and realize that culture is culture is something that you can define and grow and you can, you know, recruit around and all of that stuff. Too many people just kind of let it happen organically. And sometimes it works, but a lot of times it doesn't. And that's where, unfortunately, that can breathe the toxicity. And nothing is makes me more angry when you see vision statements on business walls and it abs means absolutely nothing to anyone within the organisation. Every single person in the organisation needs to own that vision statement, that mission statement, and, and the way, the purpose of that business. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I feel it's like that when you go onto a company's website and they say, you know, we are customer centric. And meanwhile, you're on, on the phone, lost in this phone tree, can't get to talk to a human being, chatbots are annoying you and you're going, yeah, this is super customer centric. It's like enough exactly. with the bump, enough with the bumper stickers. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And everybody wants to be, it's always authentic and innovative. Yeah. They all have the same values, but okay, what does that mean? Mm, well, that's a different question. Yeah, yeah, but it looks great. And yeah, and, exactly. and we spent, and by the way, we spent a long time on that wording. Yeah, and an awful and, lot of money on our website. Yeah, exactly, exactly, absolutely. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Lizzie, this has been fantastic, and all of Lizzie's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yes, so um, I'm passionate um, to work with leaders, particularly for females who have been exposed to a toxic environment. Now, often you don't realize you've been exposed to it, but it's something, you know, you're an authentic leader, powerful. However, you're not in don't feel empowered. So those are the leaders I work with. Those that are really powerful, really top of their tree. However, something's gone wrong in there somewhere along the line and they're not feeling as empowered as they can be. And once we unpick a bit of that, then they saw. So I do one-to-one -one coaching with individuals. I do group coaching programs and I go into businesses and I deliver workshops on resilience, tools and technique, leadership, confidence. Yeah, fantastic. I would encourage everybody to go check out, uh, go check out Lizzie. As I said, all of our information will be below uh, this video. So thank you for listening and watching and I will see you all again for another interview really soon. Thank you so much.